Let's imagine we have a graph that looks like this. We do an experiment where we change the acceleration and we measure the net force that results. The data is shown. If you look at this data, you could add a trend line shown in green, and you could even have Excel tell us the equation for that trend line. Maybe something like this. Now, if we look at that equation, and if we look at this graph, we can analyze whether there were any random errors or systematic errors. So how would we tell that there were random errors? Well, notice how the data fluctuates away from the line. Sometimes it's too high, sometimes the data point is too low, and the amount of fluctuation, the, the amount of error changes. That's a sign of random error. The data isn't on the best fit line. What about systematic errors? Well, if we take away those errors, if we think about net force and acceleration, we remember Newton's second law. Net force should be directly proportional to acceleration. And so if we had perfect data, it would go through the origin, like this. Does our graph go through the origin? No. It has an intercept of negative 0.4, and the equation tells us that. So if you extrapolate this green line, this best fit line back, if you go all the way back, it would hit the axis, the y-axis, at negative 0.4. So says the equation. OK, so we have some sort of shift in the data. The green line is our data, and our data has been shifted down, right? That means every time you measured net force on the y-axis, you recorded a data point here, but you should have measured something higher. You recorded a value too low, and it should have been something higher. All of your measurements were too low. But then, of course, they also had this random fluctuation on top of this. OK, so you could describe this graph as a downward systematic error or downward systematic shift where the net force measurements were all too low. But that's not the only way you can approach the question. If we look at the two lines, green is uh, what we have in our data, blue is what we expected in theory. You could also explain this as a shift on the x-axis. There's some systematic shift pushing all of the data points to the right, thereby shifting the entire best fit line. Now, of course, in addition to that shift, there's also random fluctuation on top of it. But if we look at that rightward shift, you could explain the data, the green, the red, by saying, every time I measured acceleration on the x-axis, I measured a value here, and it should have been smaller, farther left. I measured a value here, and it should have been smaller. So every acceleration measurement was too big. That's another way to explain this systematic error. Okay. So you could make this a, you could call it a downward shift, or you could call it a rightward shift. You could call it both if you think both things occurred. So that's how we uh, think about random and systematic errors. Now, in addition to saying which direction the, the graph was shifted, which direction your data was shifted, you can also identify how big you think that shift was. I mean, after all, if you say it's a rightward, sh an, a downward shift, this intercept tells you exactly how much downward shift occurred. On average, every data point was pushed down, point, uh, you know, down by 0.4 newtons. That's the y-axis unit. So that's one way to estimate the shift. If you think this was a rightward shift, you could look at your line, look at where it would hit the x-axis, and say, oh, look at this. My line, my graph, hits at 0.1. It should have hit at 0. So there is a rightward shift of 0.1 meters per second squared. You could say acceleration is shifted by positive 
meters per second squared. Or you could say the net force measurements were shifted uh, down or just shifted by negative 0.4 newtons. And the negative would be, you know, one way of saying down, or you could just say the word down. So these are the two ways to describe your systematic error, your shift. Now, when you're thinking back on your experiment, you measured velocity by selecting part of a graph. You pushed the cart forward, and then it collided. The blue cart, cart 2, was at rest, and then it collided. And there's some reason why these lines are not perfectly flat, like we might ex expect. Why did the velocity sort of slow down as the cart traveled across? What caused that slowing effect? And the question next for you is, well, do you want the velocity here? You know, when you measure your initial velocity, did you want this value? Did you want this value? Did you select some of this part? Did you select this in the middle while the collision was occurring? Did you select the velocity here or here? Those decisions that you made will have a really big impact on the measurements. And if you consistently if you consistently selected, you know, uh, over here instead of here, that will produce a shift. Whether it's one of these shifts, well, that's something for you to consider. But that's, that's the type of analysis uh, we look for when we explain where our systematic error came from. Go ahead, in addition, try to explain where the random error might have come from. Why was there random fluctuation? What happened in your experiment? What did you do with the carts? What did you do uh, you know, when you were collecting the data to cause that random fluctuation? And then also try to estimate you know, how big was that fluctuation? Well, the data got as far away as, I don't know, 0.1 newtons or whatever you want to say. So that's going to be the analysis that we're looking for in these lab reports.